many times a week do you sit down and eat with your family? I would love to hear your answer. Leave it down in the comments below. Welcome to The Whole Truth, everyone, where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, and we are not skipping anything. So if that sounds good to you, reach down and hit the little subscribe button below. Don't forget you can visit thewholetruthbiblestudy.com. All the videos are put in one convenient location, so if you need to catch up on the video series, you can see it there. It's pretty easy to just navigate that website. So today we're talking about In the Tabernacle, was this show bread. It was bread that was 12 loaves of bread that's supposed to be put out uh, for the priest to eat. And it's supposed to be done every week, every Sabbath day. Why would God do such a thing? Why would God have his people put bread out in the tabernacle? There's not a whole lot of space in the tabernacle. There's not a whole lot of furniture or stuff going on in there. Why would God do such a thing? Well, we're going to talk about that. Why did God do it then? What did it represent for the ancient Israelite people? But also, how does that apply to you and I today? What does that mean for us? Let's look at it together. This is Leviticus chapter 24 and verse 5. And you shall take fine flour and bake 12 cakes with it. Two tenths of an ephah shall be in each cake. You shall set them in two rows, six in a row on the pure gold table before the Lord. And you shall put pure frankincense on each row that it may be on the bread for a memorial, an offering made by fire to the Lord. Every Sabbath, he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. And it shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it in a holy place, for it is most holy to him from the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute." There you have it. That's the, that's the bread in the tabernacle. It's a big tent where the Israelite people would go to worship. God had instructed them to build this tent because it represented Christ. One day Christ would come and he would fulfill the things that are happening in and around the tabernacle. So the tabernacle is the place where ancient Israel, Israelite people could go and meet God. If they needed to get to God, if they needed to, to make a sacrifice, if they needed to give an offering, they would go to the tabernacle. And God would dwell there in the tabernacle. There was this room in the tabernacle, in the tent. It's divided into two rooms. One room is the most holy, the holiest of all. And that is where God would dwell. That's where the mercy seat was and the Ark of the Covenant was there. And only one guy could go in. The high priest could only go in once a year and all of that. Outside of that room, separated by a giant curtain, by a giant veil, if you will, there is the holy place. And inside of the holy place, there's not a ton of furniture, but there is a little bit. There's a lampstand, which we just talked about in the last video, a big golden lampstand. And it's always supposed to be burning. But now we see that there's also a golden table. It's directly across from the lampstand. And it is supposed to have 12 loaves of bread placed on this golden table every Sabbath day. So every Saturday, you replace, or they would replace the 12 loaves of bread. They would pour frankincense, pure frankincense oil on top of the bread. And then Aaron and his sons would eat on the bread all week long. They could eat from the 12 loaves of bread. And then on the Sabbath day, they would replace the 12 loaves of bread and they would pour oil on them and they would continue to do this week after week after week. They would continually put out this bread into six rows, two rows of six. Why would God have them do this and why in such a way? Well, there's lots of things that we can learn from this, but the first one being that if the tabernacle is the place where God meets man, look at what God had put inside of the tabernacle. God had inside of the tabernacle he had bread put there. If I invited you over to my house and I made a meal for you, what am, what am I saying? I want to eat with you. I want to have a relationship with you. In my home, years ago, we became parents very rapidly. My wife and I, my late wife and I, we became parents very rapidly. And when we did, we went from no kids to three kids in less than 12 months um, because we, we adopted a couple of girls and then my wife got pregnant. And so uh, just all at once, we just became kind of instant family. And we were doing all this research about family care and family health. And we continually read about how healthy and how good it was for families to sit down and have a meal together.
So we made a goal. We wanted to make a a pretty big goal in our minds. We wanted to have a meal together five nights a week. Five nights a week, set out plates, set out the silverware, put out cups, put the, put the you know, whatever elements in, on the table. That way we could all sit down and eat together. And that became such an important staple in my family. We did it for years and years and years. Even so much that when my wife passed away, we wanted to continue that, that same um, that same method. We wanted to continue that. And so we did. We continued to make meals and sit down for meals as much as we can. We try for five nights a week, at least five nights a week. Sometimes we don't get it, but we at least shoot for it. And it's a huge staple. It's a wonderful time for us to have no cell phones and no TV and just eat together and be a family together. Now, when I tell you that story, can you see what it looks like when God in his tabernacle, where he would meet man, how important it is that he would say, put out bread that you guys can come and eat from that bread, that you priests who come in here, that you can come and eat from the bread. God is demonstrating that he wants a relationship with the Israelite people. Now, it's the priests that are eating the bread, certainly, but the loaves are put out. There's 12 loaves. I mean, come on. What's the 12 loaves represent? Israel. So you've got 12 loaves that are representing Israel, and they are to be eaten by the priest all week long. It's God symbolizing that he wants a relationship with Israel his people. And even better is that it's to be done every Sabbath day. Because all of these elements, including the Sabbath day, are pointing forward to Jesus. Did you catch that? I mean, the gold points forward to Jesus' purity, to his deity, that he is God. It's made, it's acacia wood overlaid with gold, even though we didn't read that today. That's Jesus' humanity. And then the gold is his, is his deity. It's that he is God and he is man. That's where, he would, that's where God would meet us in, in himself, in his son, Jesus, who would come to this earth, fully man and fully God. And then on that table that represents Christ is 12 loaves of bread. Jesus came from the 12 tribes of Israel. He came out of the Israelite people. That's why they were God's chosen people. As a matter of fact, isn't that interesting that the that Jesus who said, I am the bread of life, came from the Israelite people. You see how this is all tying together? And where does God meet us today? In the person of Jesus. If you want a relationship with God, you must take of the bread of life. There is no other name Uh, under heaven, given among men, whereby you must be saved. It's Jesus and only Jesus. You must be saved only through him. You can have, here's the application. In ancient Israel, God was saying he would have a relationship with them. But for you and I, we, we can take of the bread of life. That is Jesus. Even Jesus himself said in John chapter six that He said, I am the bread. Remember, he fed 5,000 people and a whole bunch of people followed him and Jesus looked at him and he said, you're only following me because you want me to feed you. You didn't even follow me because of the miracles. You just want me to feed you. And Jesus said, what you don't understand is I'm the bread of life. You need to take of me. But by the end of it, that's where Jesus says that they need to eat his flesh and drink his blood and they all get weirded out and run away. Jesus said, he is the bread of life. Have you taken of him? Do you have a relationship with God the Father through Jesus the Son? Because that's the order of things. The last thing I want to point out to you is that the bread was to be set in order. Well, friends, that's true of Jesus as well. There's an order to this. You can't just go in and put the bread wherever you want it. You put the bread on the table. It was to be put in order six in a row. Isn't that interesting six in a row, because you see in the Bible, the number six represents man, represents humanity, mankind. God had the bread put in rows of six. He could have had it put in rows of uh, uh, one single row of 12, couldn't he? Why did he have to do two rows of six? Because it symbolized something. It symbolized that this is where Christ would meet with us humans, mankind. Man comes to God, has a relationship with God only through the person of Jesus. What he wants from you is to put your faith in him and only him and take of that bread, take of the bread of life. Would you do that today? If you haven't, would you take of the bread of life who is Jesus Christ? 
Every element inside of the tabernacle continually points to him and the relationship that you can have with God the Father through him. And that's what we see out of the table of showbread. I, I do want to say real quick too, the showbread, that I love the translation there because what it actually means is bread is, is, uh, is bread before your face. That's what it means. It's like bread before your face. It's ever before you. Because what God wants is not just a, a sit down and have, like you've had a meal with a famous person and then it's over. It's a perpetual thing. It's a perpetual statute. The relationship that God wants to have with you is perpetual. It starts now and doesn't end. Every Sabbath day, Sabbath, which also represents Christ, it was to be replaced perpetually, always, because the relationship God wants with you is everlasting. He wants to give you everlasting life through his son, Jesus. And I hope that you've done that. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you enjoyed what we're doing here with Leviticus. And I hope you'll come back tomorrow as we get into Leviticus chapter 24. And we'll pick up in what, verse uh, 10. So I look forward to seeing you guys then.